My name is Brian Watkins and this is my video tutorial for the QuickBooks software. Software done by the Intuit company that's used for uh, small to medium sized businesses. Uh, we believe that it's important for all of our uh, business uh, students to have some familiarity with QuickBooks because the day will come when you will be asked either to um, take care of your own business or to assist somebody whose business is struggling and QuickBooks is by far and away the, uh, the software of choice uh, for taking care of a small business. It's very adaptable. It can handle all, almost any kind of business. And for that reason, we have to uh, be very careful in our scope of how we approach the study of QuickBooks. We're going to limit you to a walkthrough of a retail company. So before you begin this tutorial, you should have watched uh, Brother Kimball's short video about the business cycle in which he goes through some of the uh, transactions and some of the accounting uh, understanding that is necessary for the, um, the limited scope of transactions we're going to do. You should also have printed out the sample exam. The sample exam will uh, give you instructions about the kind of company you're going to form and it will give you a series of transactions that you will have to uh, enter into the software. And basically what you're doing with QuickBooks is you're entering, you're making journal entries and uh, QuickBooks will handle the accounts, will keep everything separate, will take care of all of the basic information you need. Uh, it's a very uh, user-friendly program, however you do have to learn how to work with the program. Don't fight the program. So we're going to start by setting up a small retail operation. Here's the shortcut. You will, you will find QuickBooks either in the testing center or on the uh, GCB computers if you don't have it already. This is the first thing you'll see. And what you're going to do is you're going to go straight into the Express Start. And you're going to give the company your name. I have 150 of you at any given semester. so. Keep it simple, you're just going to name the company after yourself. And the industry you're going to use, help me choose, we're going to go down the list and you can see how many industries are available. You could do anything with this software, uh, from a basic lawn care to a professional operation to uh, rental perhaps, if your family owns a rental property that you rent out, a restaurant, but we're going to focus on a retail shop, basically buying inventory and then selling it to the public. Or it could be an online store, either way. That's what we're going to do. So uh, the best thing to do with QuickBooks is to just go with it as far as possible. Uh, the program will be frustrating because it will offer you so many options. I think the, the most important skill that you can take out of this module is to know that you're in charge. You're the user of this program and you're not going to break anything and you're not going to do it wrong if you close windows you don't understand. But first, we're going to open a retail shop. So let's say OK. So we have our retail shop, our company type. Uh, you need to be able to do any one of these um, depending on what we ask you to do on the test. Obviously you understand the nature of the different businesses. If you're in a partnership with somebody, you'll choose a partnership or an LLC. If it's just your business, you'll choose a sole proprietorship. Uh, if you have a corporation, you'll choose a corporation. And the reason for making all these choices in these initial setup questions is that the computer is setting up accounts. For example, we're going to pick a sole proprietorship, and as such, you won't find capital stock. You won't find paid in capital in excess of par or any of the typical accounting uh, that you would see for a corporation. Instead, We'll just have a simple owner's equity account because we've, we've said we're a sole proprietorship. Okay, now, give QuickBooks as much information as you need to get to the next window. If this were real life, obviously, you would be very careful and you would enter all your information to the last detail because QuickBooks does an excellent job of asking you only once. And once you put in your information, it pops up every time you need it. But for purposes of the exam and for purposes of our class, 
most of this information is not necessary. So when it comes to address, look, I'm just going to put some placeholder information. I don't want to know why it says HT. But basically, we want to get out of these screens and we want to create our company file. Okay, now what you can't see um, is that it takes a little while for this um, file to be opened. So while we're doing that, I want you to remember we're opening that retail operation. So let's get the company file open. All right, here it comes. All right, now we're, we've got a company file. We could, at this point, put in lists of our clients, lists of our vendors, and add our bank account. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to start right from, just going to jump right in and start working. Okay, now, the screen that has become visible, this is your main QuickBooks screen. And what you see on the screen here are those items that the program believes you need in order to take care of your business. Some of the things that you will need for your test are not yet visible. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to preferences. We're going to edit and we're going to go into preferences. This is very important. You're going to need to know how to do this. So when you go to the preferences, you see there's a number of choices that uh, are available to you. And you're going to have to learn just a couple things. The first, we are a retail operation. We're going to have inventory. Okay, so we're going to go to items and inventory, click on it, and in the company preferences, we're going to click on inventory and purchase orders. Okay, that will enable us to uh, make. Uh, enter transactions into the computer such as purchase orders of items we're going to sell. They could be surfboards for a surf company, skateboards, uh, you name it. Anything you can resell we want to be able to take care of it. So we hit OK. Uh, it's going to have to close everything to start over and we're going to come back to preferences because we're not done. Uh, we've already done the inventory but we are also uh, going to find that sales tax will need to be collected for what we do. So we're going to hit yes. We are going to charge sales tax. We're going to charge sales tax on all of our items. Um, those of you who have lived in Hawaii for a long time will know that Hawaii doesn't have a, a standard sales tax, but most areas do. And so we want to show you how this is done with QuickBooks. Uh, essentially, the business owner becomes an agent of the government and has to collect the sales taxes uh, on the sales and then pay them back to the government. So we'll just say we're going to charge sales tax and then we'll go um, set up the rest of it from there. So we'll hit OK. Uh, common sales tax. Let's do a sales tax item. And what we're going to do is just say state sales tax. You could be in any state. Okay, and let's just uh, say that our state tail sales tax is 5%. And we're going to collect for the state tax authority, which depending on your state could be anything. But here's the place to do it. So what we've done is we've added a sales tax item and we've given it sales tax 5% state tax authority. Remember this you can't go and do the test or book your transactions without being able to enter the sales tax. You can always come back to preferences and fix this if you've forgotten, but this is where you do it. So we hit OK, we do a quick add to put it in the list, and then we close up everything. Uh, it's prompting me here, do, is everything going to be taxable? Yes, everything is going to be taxable. All right, so the next thing to learn with QuickBooks, there are so many different ways to get to the functions that you need um, that it always helps to know how to get back, and that is home. The home page is where you go if you get confused. Just hit home, and now what you see here, 
has changed, you won't recognize where it's changed, but what we just managed to pop up is this manage sales tax. We can now receive inventory. We can make purchase orders. We can sell things to people. If we sell them and we get cash from them, we just create a receipt. We bill our customer and receive payment at the same time. Or if we sell them on credit, we can create an invoice. We can then record our deposits with the bank. You do not have enough time to do this test by just coming in and winging it and going to the help. Even though the help will probably get you through and you can probably figure it out, uh, there is just not enough time to learn this in the testing center. You have to practice this several times outside uh, before you can get it right. Alright, so we're ready to start. Uh, we have our business. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some money in the bank. No business can run without money. So let's make a deposit. Uh, we'll record a deposit. In order to make a deposit, you have to have a bank account. Should we create one? Yes. All right, we're going to create our bank, the Laillier First Bank. There we go. Now again, um, it asks you for all kinds of information, and the object is for you to get out of this um, quickly so that you can get uh, accurate transactions done and, and do well on your test. But in real life, spend the time to enter all this extra information. You only do it once and QuickBooks will remember it and it will offer it to you anytime it thinks you need it. But for now, that's good. So now we're on the Make Deposits screen. This is the screen where you actually enter the information about your deposit to the bank. As with all of your QuickBooks, at this point you're going to note that the video is at 12 minutes and you're going to learn the most important thing you're going to learn about QuickBooks and that is this, the date. Everything that you do will be entered into a journal, and everything will depend on chronological order. So when you look at your uh, when you look at your practice test, you have to be absolutely sure that you are doing your entries on the right date. The right date is going to be uh, as per the sample test, and we're going to make our deposit on April 1st. Okay, I know it's a Sunday, but it's just going to be April 1st because who knows? It's, it's going to change from year to year. So on April 1st, you're going to put $10,000 into the bank. So we go to Received From and we just click on that field. It looks like it's just blank, but you click on it and the program will offer you a place to type. Wherever you see an arrow there, that's to uh, pull up existing information. So I'm going to add somebody new. That person is not going to be a vendor, a customer, or an employee. It's going to be an other. It's going to be me. It's going to be the owner. And again, I could enter lots of information here, um, but we don't, need, we don't need to do that right now. We just need to get through and get our transactions into the computer so we can get our test, right? So we hit OK. Now my name pops up from account. So what account is this going to be about? Now this is an account in the accounting sense. This isn't an account in the bank account sense. When you do accounting, you make entries into various accounts. And the account that you're going to make this deposit into is going to be your owner's equity account. Okay. Now this will be our initial capitalization. The memo is good for you to type because when you look at your journal later you're going to want to see you know exactly something to tie you into this. Your test will consist of you doing a dozen or so transactions and if you mess one of them up the memo will help you know exactly which one is which. So that's a good reason to keep the memo. Check number um, okay let's say I wrote my check number 200. Again, you just make that up. Uh, I may give you information on the test, in which case I'll look for it. If I don't give you information, you can feel free to leave it blank. The payment method is going to be cash. Actually, let's, let's do the check, because I said check 200. 
but you can see here it could be any of these methods. Um, check number 200. I wrote my personal check in the amount of $10,000. Now, QuickBooks is written for general users. Um, they've made certain changes recently to acknowledge that they have a lot of accountants that use the software, but it tries to do things such as warn you that you're about to use your owner's equity account. Well, you're all accountants. You know better than the software, so feel free. You know that you're making your initial capitalization. It's fine to say okay. That's the happy beep. When you hear that beep, you know that the transaction has, has booked and it's in the software. Now, what can you do to check if you did it right? First thing you can do is you can go to your reports. You can go to your company and financial reports and you can say, let's take a look at a balance sheet. As you know, a balance sheet has a certain date. And I have to tell you over and over again, the date is so important. Right now, it defaults to March 10th because that's the day I'm preparing this video. But because you're doing a, a uh, scholastic exercise, this is all academic. We're making updates and transactions. The software is not designed for that. The software is designed to protect people from accidentally entering the wrong date. So it always assumes the date from your computer. Well, your balance sheet is as of a certain time. Well, you'll recall that I put this money in on April 1st, so I don't see anything there. That's number one. You've got to get your date right. So I just hit that little calendar thingy. I go to April 1st. I could go to any date past April 1st because it's a balance sheet. I just want a picture at that time. And you must hit refresh. Once you hit refresh, now you see this balance sheet as of April 1st, 2012. And you see Laie First Bank. It has $10,000 in it. And that $10,000 is your owner's equity. You've deposited that $10,000 into the account. So you're all set up. The other way you could do this Okay, when it asks you for these yes, no, just always answer no. Um, you could look at your journal. You go to accountant and taxes. Go to your journal. Okay, just tell it you know what you're doing. And remember your date. Uh, you're going to have to switch this out. I'll just hit some date in April and look at everything. Refresh. Now I can see my journal entry for transaction number one. It was a deposit. April 1st, by me, there's my memo, initial capitalization, it went into LIA First Bank, and it was in the owner's equity account. So the journal is where I can see what's going on. Now let's say I got through all of this, and I realized, oh, I screwed up, I need to go back and fix it. Well, go to your record deposits, and you'll see it says previous or next. If I hit previous, now I can see all my information and I could make changes. Let's say now that I want to say I paid cash. So I erase that, I change this to cash, and then I say save. It says, do you want to record your changes? Yes. Again, it thinks I don't know what I'm doing with owner's equity, but I do know what I'm doing, so I'm going to hit OK. Now if I were to go back and look at my report and look at my Accountant and Taxes Journal. Learn how to find the journal. It'll help you. Hit OK. Change this up to some date out in the future. Refresh. Now I can take a look. There it is. If I wanted to look closely at it, it now says cash. So I've made a change. Hopefully you won't make any errors. Be very careful. Be systematic. Always check your date. But if you do make errors, it, there are ways to correct them. Uh, some errors will, will cause multiple things to happen, such as deposits into the bank, which could cause checks to bounce. Everything builds on prior transactions. So I urge you to be careful. Because most students do very well at knowing what to do, but what they struggle with is how to correct errors they've made. So the best thing to do is just not make the error in the first place. But that's how to that's how to get back if you do. All right, so now we have ten thousand in the bank. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to make a purchase order. We're going to sell some things. 
So we're going to buy some beach cruisers here. We'll open up the purchase order. You'll recognize that it looks kind of similar. The most important thing on the page is the date. Now it knows we did something on April 1st, so it's working with us and it's saying is this April 1st, but it's not. If you look at your sample exam, we're now on April 5th. So before I do anything, I change my date, April 5th. Alright, my purchase order. I'm going to have a new vendor. My vendor is going to be the China Bicycle Company. I'm going to buy bikes from China. It's going to ask me all this stuff about opening balance, names, build from, shipped from. You don't need that for the test. You need that for real life, but not for the test. So uh, the things that you could do, uh, you could add uh, all kinds of information. And as you use QuickBooks, you learn to see how uh, this information is helpful. You can enter the credit limit so that if I do a purchase order where I would exceed the credit limit, the program would warn me. Uh, it could tell me exactly how to set up accounts so that I could have everything ready to go with just a push button. And you'll find later in our exercise that the more information QuickBooks has, the easier it becomes to use. Since we're starting from scratch, we have no opening balance, so we don't worry about that. We just go from here. So now we have our vendor, China Bicycle Company. It's going to ship to me. It's purchase order number one. So we go into this item right here, and I click. And what's my item going to be? Well, it's a new item. I'm going to buy uh, an inventory part. And it's going to be a beach cruiser. All right, and my beach cruiser is going to show up anywhere I purchase from uh, my China bike company. It's going to be catalog number, uh, let's just say ABC1. Okay, that's what the China bicycle company sees. They also see the fact that these bicycles cost 50 bucks. Okay, but I don't want my customers seeing catalog ABC1. I want my customers to see beach cruisers. Okay. Any good retail establishment does not want people to know that they could buy the same goods cheaper on the internet. Uh, otherwise, you know, why go to your store? The sales price for my beach cruisers is going to be 200 bucks. That markup is something you want to keep to yourself. Uh, forgot the part number there. It's catalog number ABC1. Let me pull this up so you can see it. All right. So here's what we're doing. Our income account is going to be merchandise sales. Um, it's going to be a taxable item. There's our sales price. Down here, I can, I can put a, a number in here and say whenever I get below 10 of these items, give me a reminder and tell me to order more. Uh, I get all these other fields come in handy uh, and we'll uh, save time later but for now all we need to do is tell it the cost 50 bucks sales price 200 there's our item and we're going to order some quantity of them let's order 10 10 beach cruisers okay and it's not for any particular customer it's for us so we'll leave it blank uh, message to our vendor would be hey get us these bikes quick memo for us would be initial purchase of inventory 10 bikes okay here's our initial purchase order to the china bicycle company and there's the happy noise that means that we got our transaction into the machine now if we look at our reports and we look at our balance sheet and we change our date and we come forward to the end of April and we refresh, we still see $10,000 in the bank and $10,000 owner's equity. Because all we did was a purchase order. Okay, The purchase order does not affect the financial condition of the company. We've just invited the bike company to send us some bikes. Okay, So don't, uh, if you're checking your statements every time, which is a good idea, uh, you won't see anything when you've done your purchase order. All right, $10,000 is our money, but that's not quite enough to run a company. So what we're going to do now is we're going to borrow some money. And we're going to borrow the money and deposit it into the bank. 
Now, you can do all kinds of loan things. You can come up here to banking and you can use Loan Manager and you can, there's a dozen different ways to do this. Try to keep it simple. So, and QuickBooks, like all software, will give you shortcuts and have hidden features that you can learn about. But right now, you're just trying to make the, the software work. So go over to Record Deposits, and we're going to deposit the money in Lottie First Bank. Check the date. First thing you always do is check the date. So what's going to happen is on the 11th of April, we're going to get some money and we're going to say it's another uh, it's another other here just so you can see what I'm doing and it's going to be uh, Connie Elhey Business Bank okay and we're going to go to the Business Bank and we're going to borrow uh, this is going to be uh, lib let's see here what account do we want to use for this we have a long-term liability. Well, it's not on here. Add new. All right, so we're going to add a new uh, account here because we need a long-term liability, and it didn't set one up for us when we opened the company, which is fine. Uh, we're going to use a loan here. Okay, we're going to create a loan account. We'll continue, and we'll say that this is a long-term liability and it's the note payable Connie Ohe Bank or Connie Ohe Business Bank I think we called it. Uh, we'll just call it Connie Ohe Bank. Alright so now we've got that in there we say uh, working capital loan and we're just gonna get our cash in here and we're going to borrow $20,000. $20,000 and it's now in the bank. It's at 30 days. You're going to see this a few times in the course of our exercise. Um, just are we sure we want to make the change? Of course we are. All right so now we have our loan done and we have our money in but once it's in let's go to our loan manager now and let's see some of the assistance that uh, our program can provide to us. So we're going to stretch it out here. We're going to add a loan. And our account name is the note payable. We just set that up. Our lender, Connie Oe Bank, we just set that up. And we did it on April 11th. It was a $20,000 loan. And our term was five years. This will be on your uh, on your information. It says that we borrowed for five years at nine and a half percent compounded monthly. So we go to next. Our due date. Uh, let's just say it's going to be May 11th. We don't know what our payment is, um, so we'll just say monthly uh, alert. That's good. There's no escrow. Enter the payment amount. Okay. Well, let's just say. 750. Honestly, if you ever get a loan from a bank, the first thing they tell you is how much. So you'll have that information in the real world. But we're just going to plug 750 here. Now we'll hit next. Now the interest rate's 9.5. What I'm seeing here is please select the bank account. Okay. 9.5. The payments is going to come from our LIA First Bank. Our interest expense will just be we'll call it interest expense. So everything's set up here and we'll finish. Alright, so if we looked at our payment schedule uh, we could do all kinds of things. We could do a what if and we could say we borrowed twenty thousand uh, we borrowed it on April 11th we borrowed it for five years which is sixty months um, payment our interest was 9.5. Next payment's going to be May. May 11th. Calculate. So that tells us exactly uh, what's going on. It tells us that our payment amount to amortize this over 60 months would be 420. So clearly our 750 is doing us doing us well. So we'll hit OK. Uh, we'll close that. 
the important thing that you've just done, and if you've done it right, is you've put the money in the bank. So let's check. Let's look at our, um, we could do a banking report, but let's look at our uh, balance sheet. The balance sheet is the picture of the, of the business, so let's always go to that first. Here's what we've got. We now have 30000 in our bank account. That's right. We now have a note payable to Kaneohe Bank for 20000 That's right. And we've got our 10000 owner's equity for what we paid. Perfect. Um, everything's good. We've, we've put our money in the bank. So now let's move on. Uh, nope. Okay. So what's next? We read our test and we see that on the 12th, China Bicycle delivers all 10 bikes you ordered. Well, wonderful. We receive inventory. Okay, record receipt of inventory that arrived with a bill or without a bill to keep your inventory up to date. So, we'll click on receive inventory with a bill. Here is the bill. Now, the vendor was the China Bicycle Company. We now owe them. And the, here's where you start to see how QuickBooks helps you out. We have a purchase order open for this vendor. Do we want to receive against the purchase order? Yes, we do. So we click that, and then the program brings in the information from our purchase order. Now, this is going to be the most important thing you always do is go to your date. We're on the 12th. Um, we have terms. The terms on any uh, delivery, 210 net 30, means if we pay our bill within 10 days, we get to take 2% off as a prompt payment discount. Otherwise, the bill is due net in 30 days. So from the test, we know, or from the, uh, the sample uh, test, we know that we're going to have terms of 210 net 30. So we have to enter that. And the reason for it is now QuickBooks will keep track and tell us, hey, if you pay this by April 22nd, you're going to save a lot of money. Our memo is going to be uh, bill for initial purchase of inventory. That's just to help us keep straight what's going on. Now, at this point, we're going to have to think like an accountant because we see from our, uh, from our uh, sample that the invoice is for $530. There is shipping and handling. Um, there may be tax. There may be preparation fee. There may be all kinds of things. And as you know, all of those costs are part of our cost of goods sold. So we know that our bill is going to be 530. So we're going to have to change this amount here to 530. Now, if we do that, click down here, you'll see that the cost per bike automatically shifted to 53. Okay, so understand what just happened. When you called up your bill, all the software knew was that you had a purchase order for $500. But as you also know from your experience in the world, there's always additional shipping and handling or additional tax or some additional cost. This is probably the second most important thing to learn from this video. First is the date. The second is this little box right here. You have to enter the amount that you're actually going to pay for that, that, uh, go those goods. Otherwise, your program won't know what the cost of goods sold is, your income won't be computed right, and your grade will suffer. So you want a good grade on this test, you remember to keep your dates right, and you remember to enter your inventory value at the complete cost. And the complete cost is given to you as 530. All right, everything's good. Save and close. Yes. Now, again, would you like this information? Just say no. All right. So now if we go in here, we have inventory. That changes. If we go to, uh, sorry, reports, and we're going to go to company, look at our balance sheet, and we're going to change our date, throw it up uh, end of April. Now we've got a new asset. We have inventory. We have $530 of inventory. 
that we're going to sell. Uh, we still have the 30000 in the bank because we bought this on credit. And QuickBooks is smart enough to now tell us we've got an account payable. We've got a bill we have to pay for $530. So you move on. You've got it in there. Everything is good. What's our next? Looks like on the 14th, we're going to sell two bicycles on account to one Sarah Clark for $420. So where do we go to sell? If we sell it and we receive the payment at the same time, we could just do a receipt. But we're going to sell on account because I'm here to make your life more difficult and I want you to learn how to create an invoice. So we'll create an invoice and you see a screen that looks a lot like your other screens. It looks like your, your bill screen or your purchase order screen. This is an invoice and this is for a customer that you don't have yet. It's a new customer. So we'll just enter Sarah, uh, what was her name? Sarah Clark. And we'll look at the uh, information. We don't need any information but her name right now. The date of this sale is the 14th. So let's make sure to get the date right. And we're going to sell Sarah two bicycles. Quantity two. And the item code you see here that our beach cruiser has showed up. Uh, we'll just click the beach cruiser and we're going to get our $200 price that's automatic and also you'll see that the state sales tax popped up automatically and it calculated a 5% tax which is $20 that $20 we have to collect and we'll put it in our bank account and at the end of the month or at uh, the end of the quarter whatever your state requires we'll forward the taxes so we can give our customer it's been a pleasure working with you message you can program any message you want here and again that's that's what QuickBooks does to help you out uh, our memo would be first sale two bicycles let's look at it 450 let's check our date always check your date 414 414 that's good okay let's save it now, remember how uh, I told you it was important that you get your cost of goods sold right. Let's go check that. Now that we've made a sale, we actually have some income statement information. So we'll go to our company financial, we'll go to a profit and loss standard. We'll come over here, let's change the date forward, April 30th, and refresh. Now, we've taken in $400 in sales, not $420. The program's smart enough to know that that $20 was just a liability that we owe to the state sales tax people. And there's the cost of goods sold. 106 It automatically remembered that each item of inventory is $53 worth of cost. $50 for the bike and $3 for each bike's share of the shipping and handling. So now we have profit. We have income. Our business is moving right along. What we don't have, though, is any money. We're, we're still just working on our, if we uh, look at our reports again, and we'll go to our balance sheet. I'm doing a lot of this just to show you where to go find this, refresh. We still have 30000 in the bank. And the reason why is we're doing a lot of credit transactions. We're buying the bikes on credit. We're selling them on credit. All right, our next transaction. The business sells five bicycles on account. So we're going to do another invoice. We're going to check the date. It's the 17th. And we sell the five bicycles to the Bicycle Courier Company. So we have a new customer. Bicycle Courier Company. And we're not going to worry about the other information. And we're just going to come down here and say five beach cruisers. Great sale. It's calculated the, the tax. It's done everything right. Um, $1,050. Customer message. Thank you for your business. Memo. Second sale. Five bicycles. Your memo can be anything. This is really for your own good, uh, the memo. I'm not looking for anything on the test. What's, what's important for the test is that you book the transaction right which would mean that you've created 
an invoice for $1,050, which is the sales price of these uh, bicycles plus the sales tax that you have to collect. Now, it looks like we have on this one uh, discount terms. Oh, we had it on the last one too. Good, I made a mistake. I can show you how to fix mistakes. When you uh, make a sale, you can give terms to your customers. And it gives you some standard terms like net 30. You pay me within 30 days. But we're going to give uh, 310 net 30, which is new. So we'll call this 310 net 30. And basically that says the net is due in 30 days, not 39. And the discount percentage is 3% if paid within 10 days. Okay, So now we can assign 310 net 30 and we can save and close this transaction. But I screwed up. I forgot to put terms on my last invoice. So now I can go, uh, let's, let's save it. I don't want it. Let's go back to invoices now and let's look at previous. That's the beach cruisers. Everything's good for the uh, bicycle career. Go back one more. Ah, now we have Sarah Clark. I forgot to put on her invoice 310 net 30. I just did that. Save and new. Perfect. I've changed it. So if you make a mistake, these previous and next keys will get you there. All right. So now we've got our invoices out there. Um, we can check. We just made a big sale to the the China or the uh, bicycle courier company. So let's take a look now, since we like to look at profits, and we'll change. And now we go to April thirtieth. Refresh. Now we've sold fourteen hundred dollars of merchandise at uh, cost of goods sold three seventy one. Profit, $1,029. Good. We're moving right along. Okay, so our next transaction is on the 26th. So now I come up, uh, and what am I going to do? My business receives cash. Great. We made the sale, but now we've got the payment. Receive, record a payment you have received from a customer against an invoice or billing statement. Perfect. So here's our customer payment we received from Sarah Clark the amount of four hundred and twenty dollars and what was the date most important thing the date is the 26th of April alright she paid us by check and her check number was 2097 tells us that on our on our uh, piece of paper here so we have all of our information this is payment for first first invoice to Sarah Clark all right looks like 420 was due 420 is applied uh, what day did she pay she paid us on the 26th and her discount date was the 24th so uh, right there if she had paid earlier she would have gotten a discount and the computer would have figured out how much that discount was and it would have handled all of the accounting for that. Everything automatic, which is the wonder of QuickBooks. So we'll save it. Okay, now, problem number three on the QuickBooks module. Let's uh, close this. What we just did is we received a payment, but the payment has not gone into the bank. See this little arrow here? It goes to record deposits. You are not done until you've put your money in the bank. And if you look, uh, your sample exam has a clue here. Let's read the 26th. The business receives payment from Sarah Clark in the amount of 420 and deposits the money in the bank on the same day. All right, so let's record the deposit. And now it realizes that you just got a check in from Sarah Clark. And you could, all you have to do is check the box. Now I have one of one payments selected for deposit. I only have the Laie Bank, so it knows where it's going. Okay, now it's, it's done my deposit screen for me. Remember we did this ourselves the first time for the owner's equity? This time it's done it for me. It's still the 26th. I've checked that. That's good. It's got my memo, payment for first invoice to Sarah Clark. 
it's undeposited funds so I'm gonna put it in the bank wonderful now let's take a look let's see what's happening here we'll go up to reports and we'll look at the balance sheet we'll tell it to go all the way to the end of April and take a look refresh now that four hundred twenty dollars is sitting in our bank account we still have a thousand fifty that we're going to receive from bicycle courier company someday we still have uh, three bikes remember each bike was fifty three dollars three bikes of our inventory are sitting there so there's our assets let's move this up uh, it's not going to move that up so I'm going to move this down so our liabilities we have a bill for five hundred and thirty dollars because we haven't paid for our bikes yet we've collected sales tax that we have to pay off to the state and we've got that twenty thousand dollar note sitting out there uh, our owner's equity is ten thousand and our income's thousand twenty nine so all this accounting is being done for us by QuickBooks alright so we read our next one the business writes a check to pay the 530 invoice from China Bicycle. Good. All good businesses pay their bills. Pay outstanding bills we've already entered. And you'll recall we entered the bill. So we'll hit pay. And it already knows that the bill is out there because we entered it before. So now we just check, check that. This is the bill we want to pay. It knows what the terms were. And it knows that today is the 29th. Okay, I don't know why they put the date down in the corner for this, but they do. So we're paying on the 29th. And I don't think that we have earned our discount. If we did, it would calculate it. But I think we got around to this bill a little bit late for the discount. Let's come up here. LIA First Bank automatically came up. Check automatically came up. So let's pay it. And it's been successfully recorded for the China Bicycle Company. Great. Done. So we just paid our bill. Uh, we don't need to check our check our uh, financial statements just yet. You can imagine what happened. Uh, let's go down here. Okay, now we're gonna, at, on the 30th, we're gonna receive some payment from our courier company. Our courier company is gonna pay us 1050 and it's gonna be on the 30th of the month and it's going to deposit the money in the bank on the same day I can't imagine why you wouldn't deposit the money maybe you got it on a Saturday uh, so payment for second sale of bicycles okay it's 1050 uh, it doesn't look like there was any credits they didn't pay within the credit period so we'll save it and then we'll put it in the bank just check the box everything looks good now it's in the box okay so we've gone through and we've done everything for that first month that's on our sample exam okay it's all done so now what we're gonna get is a bank statement your bank statement comes uh, it comes sometime in the next month say sometime in May your bank statement will be dated let's just say it's dated May 1st so let's go here to reconcile you're now going to reconcile your bank statement your statement date is given to you as May 1st and your ending balance is given to you as 30,450 it's on the statement okay in the real world you'll have a statement in your hand and you'll just enter this information if you have any service charges you'd enter that uh, you're a new customer so they've waived those your date uh, looks like you've earned some interest from your checking so let's put the it says here your statement shows thirty dollars interest income for the month of April you're in May now so make sure that you book that in April okay uh, this becomes particularly important if for any reason on the test you would be dealing with December if you booked that income into January you'd uh, have a problem on your statements so we got some interest earned in April 
And what account does that go in? That goes in an income account that I'm not seeing. And so we just add a new and we say it's other income, select from examples, interest income. So hopefully what you see here is that QuickBooks will always be there to give you what you need. Um, you just have to let it put it in front of you. Don't fight it. It'll, it'll be there somewhere. All right, so let's continue. We've got our, our uh, statement information in. And so now we're looking at our reconciliation. So look back at your statement and your information. You are told that um, check 239 for 530 has not cleared. So I can't check on that one. Um, your bicycle courier check for 1050 has not cleared. I can't check that one. All your other transactions have cleared. Our initial deposit, our second deposit, and then our deposit of 420. So once I check those, now I see that there's a zero difference. So my my uh, records match my statement. I've told I've told the uh, program that no, these two haven't cleared yet. They're not on the statement. So the statement is correct. I reconcile. Uh, let's take a look at uh, both reports. We'll display them. And you'll see here, here's our deposits and credits. Here's uncleared transactions. And we balance. So our ending balance, uh, that's our summary. And if we want to look at our detail, here's our detail. And you can see that everything is in balance. Okay. So that's how to do a reconciliation. You'll have to print that out. And at this point, what you would do is you would go to your reports, you go to your accountants, and you would do your journal. And on your journal, we'll just go up to May 1st. Here is your journal. And on this journal, as I scroll down, you see every one of those transactions that you were required to put into this as part of your examination. And if I, I, I'll expect you to print that out and provide that. And we'll also take a look at the income statement. We'll go to the uh, 1st of May here. So here's our income statement, 1059 Good. Remember, you had $30 interest income. It remembered to put that in. We'll print that, and then we'll look at the balance sheet, and we'll have to shoot that forward in time as well. And refresh, and our balance sheet looks good. So looks like our balance sheet, uh, we still have those three unsold bikes. We've got some sales tax we need to pay out. We've got that note. We haven't made any payments on the note. Um, there's our income. So I would print that out. Uh, I'm going to post instructions about how we're going to do this because I'm not quite sure at this point whether the testing center can put hard copy or whether you're going to need to um, save them as a PDF. So let me just get ahead of the game. Whenever you have a report in QuickBooks, the options available at the top will include email, print, Excel. Send report as PDF. Learn how to use this feature. Okay, we're going to hit OK. And when you send email from QuickBooks, your email will be sent to Outlook. So we'll put it over here to Outlook. And it's going to open Outlook and do everything it does. Otherwise, well, okay, it's still working on it. We could go to, okay, here it comes, pops up. And what you could do, if I give you instructions on your test to email your instructor your report, this is how you would do it. Alternatively, I may say, print to a file. Okay, and this is my printer in my office, but uh, whatever file here you have, you could print to it and we would have you, let's do the QuickBooks PDF converter, alright? So we're going to print to a PDF, 
doesn't like it. Could not print to printer. Uh, let's try that again. QuickBooks option. All right, well, I will have to work on that and figure out how to get the testing center to print to a PDF. But by the time that your test rolls around, I will have instructions for you as to how to spit that out. But in the real world, you can also create Excel worksheets. Uh, you can send them as Excel or PDF. Uh, there's just a, a whole different, uh, uh, or a whole bunch of menu items there that you can figure out. Typically, you'll have your own printer and you'll just print it. But uh, this is how to do the QuickBooks to the level that you're expected to learn for this. And let's close that. Let me just go over two things. The most important thing you do on this is whenever you create an invoice, you check the date. There's your invoice. Purchase order. There's your date. Receiving inventory with the bill. There's your date. You always check the dates. And when you receive payments and you put them into your books, you take the payments to the bank and you put them in their, your deposits. And I can just go through previous and I can see all the deposits I've made. It even created that interest income for me automatically. So you're not an expert in QuickBooks. But you should feel confident that you can pick it off the shelf and help anybody that has a business uh, learn how to use it. The extra credit on this exam will be for you to learn how to turn payroll on. Payroll in QuickBooks is an exceptionally uh, difficult thing to do because Intuit doesn't want you to do your payroll yourself. Intuit wants you to have to pay hundreds of dollars to do your payroll. So I'm going to show you this little trick. Um, don't be intimidated by payroll taxes. You can go on the internet and you can pull up a payroll calculator. And let me do that. Okay, I came out and I went into Google and I typed payroll calculator. The most complicated thing about payroll is that you have to enter the right amounts of taxes and then uh, once every quarter and uh, at the end of the year you have to file a payroll tax return to get these things back to the government but uh, let's just do the payroll calculator and see what comes up um, either one of these this free payroll tax calculator let's do that this was the one I, I found that I thought was very helpful all you do is you enter your check amount into this calculator and it will tell you exactly what you need for federal income tax, social security tax, Medicare, state income tax. It will even let you choose a state. If I choose California, it will add California state disability insurance, which you're required to collect in California. So what QuickBooks does, let's go back to QuickBooks. QuickBooks will try to sell you payroll and it's extremely expensive. It's like $200 a year and you can do it yourself. So I would like my students to know how to get QuickBooks to do payroll manually. And it's almost impossible to find, but here's how you do it. You go to help, okay? You do not go to the box here. You go to the help. And in the QuickBooks help, which is opening up, and taking its sweet time doing it. And it's still taking its time. You're going to type manual payroll. And they've designed this set up manual payroll can't display the answer yet. It's ex so let's see, it's not process payroll manually. Here we go. So process payroll manually, and what you'll do is you'll read these recommendations, which over and over again will tell you, don't do it, don't do it. Uh, if you come down here to the bottom, let's see, set up your payroll using payroll setup. 
here we go set my company file to use manual calculations this is the only place in the software where you can find this um, I won't tell you how long it took me to find this but I'm teaching you now and if you want your extra credit okay I hit set my company file to use manual calculations it says you must now calculate and enter your paycheck amounts manually if you have a payroll service subscription you must call them to cancel your subscription don't subscribe to their payroll service because you can get everything that you need free on the internet okay it'll it'll walk you right through the process and all you need to do is enter it into QuickBooks and so as soon as I hit OK did you see what happened it popped right up here pay employees pay liabilities enter time so you could use a weekly timesheet and it pops up something like this and you can have your employees name and you can say how many hours they work on each day and then when you come down to paying them uh, it'll again uh, try to sell you the, the payroll uh, that's kind of beyond the test if you want to what I'd like you to be able to do is turn on this feature so that you can see the pay employees if you can work your way through that I think that you're uh, you're set to go and then you just remember that when you when you do the checks that you would have to go online and figure out the various amounts but for extra credit on this test I want to um, I want to see that you are able to turn on the pay employees and we're gonna have to do something so all you're gonna do is you're gonna get your timesheet you're gonna create your own name you're gonna go to um, let's go to April uh, let's say April 30th and we'll say I worked 10 hours okay save and close uh, it's not billable meaning I'm not billing it to a client it's just straight payroll and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pay set up okay, I'm making it way too complicated look I just want to uh, figure out how to get the payroll here so let me do this behind the scenes okay uh, the reason it's extra credit is it's a lot of busy work you gotta step through a ton of menus to set up an employee just enter whatever gets whatever makes the computer happy because all you have to do to get your uh, extra credit is to go to home and pay your employee something so my pay period is going to end um, let's just say it ended uh, April 30th and my check is going to be um, let's see May 1st and if I have something here uh, let's see I'm going to have five hours I'm selecting myself five hours continue there's my pay create paychecks done close now if I go to my reports and I say let's see that profit loss and I go off to say end of May there should be payroll expense 50 bucks and that payroll expense should match uh, whatever it was you paid I don't care if your taxes were right or if your information was right you've earned your extra credit just by getting that to appear because you're gonna to have to remember how to find it and by getting it to spit out don't go looking for extra credit if you are running out of time on the exam there's a lot to do on this exam so you're fine if you've gotten all of your transactions booked just get out of there with your A but if you want the extra credit and you take the extra time that's how I know that you've done it right as I see a payroll expense on your income statement okay and there will be a corresponding change to your financials uh, other than the amount that I would expect uh, on my answer key because I don't care how much you pay I just want you to figure out how to get the pay to come up 
and to work your way through everything so that you make some sort of payment to your employee. That's the extra credit. If you don't go there, look, I just want to show you that there is a way to do QuickBooks manual payroll. You don't have to be a hostage to QuickBooks payroll options. It will try to sell it to you every step of the way. Um, but you guys are all smarter than QuickBooks and I'm sure you could do this just fine. So that's my uh, my section here on QuickBooks. It's uh, a lot to take in one video. I hope that you will have marked uh, as you go along uh, where I talk about, for example, uh, opening a purchase order or receiving inventory or any of the other number of things that you'll need to do for this uh, section. Practice it. Practice it with a friend. This is the most frustrating, um, the most frustrating module for most students. They uh, approach it without enough practice and they get lost in this maze of things. Uh, they forget how to make changes. But if you work through it a couple times, you will have made all the mistakes you're going to make. If you check your dates before you commit to any transaction, you'll be fine. If you watch your journal and you watch your statements each time to make sure that what you did was correct, you'll be fine. So don't be intimidated by it, um, but do, do the work necessary and you'll be sufficient, uh, sufficiently educated to go out and use QuickBooks yourself or to help anybody. Uh, this is plenty of understanding and you can go and, uh, and do what you need to do. So I uh, hope that you will contact me with any questions you might have, come to any of the lectures, and I will work through any, any part of this. But you need to be able to do this um, all dozen or so transactions. And I think we give you uh, 45 minutes. I may give you a little bit more. But uh, good luck on this. Work hard, and you'll be QuickBooks experts before you know it.